Rest this week is representation theory and tensors and I'm just gonna do the character table of S4 and I'm gonna sort of go back a little bit carefully tomorrow but I just want to throw this at you so you can do the character table of S5 this afternoon and I feel you know maybe many of you know the symmetric group S4 so S4 is the symmetric group on four letters it's a certain group on 24 elements, namely the permutation on the four of us. Suppose you didn't know that, it's the group given by this Thinken diagram. Okay. So you take this Thinken diagram called A3. You, it's a group that has three generators. One, two, two, three, and three, four. Okay. So those are the adjacent transpositions and then uh, this diagram tells you, you know, the relations. This tells you the group. It's a nice thing about these thinking diagrams. So it's a certain group, S4 is a certain group uh, generated by these uh, adjacent transpositions and um, so these uh, come in conjugacy classes. So in a finite group you have a conjugacy classes. So remember you took a course back in your undergraduate days called abstract algebra. They were conjugacy classes. The symmetric group has five conjugacy classes. The identity by itself is a conjugacy class of only one element. Um, then transpositions, there are six transpositions in the symmetric group. Uh, there are eight three cycles in the symmetric group. There are six four cycles and then there are three uh, double transpositions like this. So one plus six plus three plus eight plus six is 24. So these are the cardinalities of the five conjugacy classes of the symmetric group. Now the rows in the character table are the irreducible representations. Um, I'm going to go over this in a bit more detail next time, but uh, the symmetric group S4 has five irreducible representations and you learn in your undergraduate class that for a finite group the number of conjugacy classes always equals the number of irreducible representations, so we get a 5 by 5 table. Okay. Now what are these entries in this table? Well, these are the traces of the corresponding matrices. Okay. So, first of all the identity matrix. What's the trace of the identity matrix? Well, the trace of the identity matrix is the size of the matrix. Right? So if you have a 3 by 3 identity matrix, the trace would be 3. So, this tells you, the character table tells you the traces of the corresponding matrices. Right, so for every representation row of the symmetric group pi, row of pi is a certain matrix and then in this table you write the trace of this matrix. So, so the first column, the traces of the identity, they are just the dimensions of these irreducible representations. So this funny symbol is a certain representation of dimension 1. V is a one-dimensional vector space, has this funny name. Here there's a three-dimensional vector space with this name, maybe this name. There's a two-dimensional vector space with this name, that's a three-dimensional vector space with that name, and that's a one-dimensional vector space with that name. Okay, so those are the dimensions and a little bit more numerology, 1 squared plus 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 1 squared equals... Oh, that's 24. That's interesting. Okay, so those are the dimensions of the five irreducible representations of the symmetric group S4. Okay? Now let's fill the rest of the table, right? So now you take any other group element, for example the group element 1, 2, 3. So that's a, a 3 cycle. The trace of this 3 cycle, well under this representation, right, so if you take this representation row applied to this pi, you get a 2 by 2 matrix. 
that 2 by 2 matrix has trace minus 1. Okay, is that clear? So I'm going to say this one more time. Okay, so if you take an adjacent transposition and you map it in into the space, into write down the corresponding 3 by 3 matrix that acts on this three-dimensional vector space. This three-dimensional vector space for me like every other vector space I ever met has a distinguished basis to be revealed tomorrow. Right? This is a three-dimensional vector space with a distinguished basis so therefore this each of these is a matrix and this is the table of traces of these matrices. Now these characters are orthonormal and that's how you fill the table actually they're orthonormal with respect to the natural inner product. So you take the inner product of two such characters. So the rows are the characters, the, the traces are the characters. And you average one over the group, the size g over all group elements, chi of g times chi prime of g. Okay? So I claim that these row vectors are orthonormal, they're, orthon they're orthog orthonormal with respect to this inner product. Okay? So in this inner product, we have to multiply, of course, by the size of the conjugacy class. Right? So, so for example, let's just take you know, the first vector. Let's test this out, and then we're going to have lunch. Okay? So let's calculate the inner product of this row vector with itself. Or well, let's do the first two. Let's take the, the inner product of this vector times that vector. Okay? So that's 1 times 3 plus 1 times 1 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 plus 1 times plus 1 times minus 1 plus 1 times minus 1 plus 1 times minus 1 3 times. And 8 times 1 times 0 1 times 0 da 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 plus six times, this times that. You add it all up. You divide by 24 and you get zero. Is that clear? Okay. Let's try a row. Okay. So I claim that this vector has length one. Okay. So, okay. so we go, you know, three squared and then we have the minus one six times. Six times minus one squared plus 3 times minus 1 squared, here we get a 0, plus 6 times 1 squared. I hope I did this right. So this is, hmm? 24. Is this 24? Okay, great. So this also has length 1. Okay. That's the character table. Okay. So the last exercise, and it's a little bit of fun, you know, there's a hint which you enjoy, you know, is to just write down the character table of S5. Okay. Now, why is that important to, to practice this? Because this is the formal tool that you can use to describe representations as decomposed into irreducible representations. Okay. That's a formal tool. And we need a little bit of that. Now that formal tool in general is not good enough to actually speak about rho and to speak about the names of the basis vectors of these vector spaces. That requires extra effort. That's an effort that Luke has mastered but that requires practice and we'll do a little bit of practice with that. Okay? So uh, that's my last exercise. So tomorrow we'll go more slowly. Um, tomorrow we'll discuss the symmetric group. Tomorrow we'll discuss the general linear group and how the interplay of the symmetric group and the general linear group is absolutely essential for the study of tensors. And I apologize for ending one minute early.